We love Miami, we love our region. We have all sorts of creative arts exploding. And the question we ask is how do we make sure that every child who grows up here has a chance to be a part of that? Like moving with the sounds of music, that is something we can all relate to, but that is something that not all of us have the privilege to have. At the end of the day, equity to music is a social justice issue. And when we look at who does have access to music, it's kids that have access to a lot of other things as well. The reason why the arts are so important in any curriculum in and of themselves, they're powerful, but they also have the capacity to help kids retain information across subject areas. There's research that also supports music for music's sake. There's plenty of data supporting that, and when we take that out, those are the areas that kids are suffering educationally. Young people are struggling to find a place for themselves. Our job, I believe, as educators is to find a way to connect to every kid. Music bridges the gap for a lot of people, right? It's what brings people together, it affects your emotions, your soul, uh, puts you in a certain kind of mood. There's a lack of programs and things pertaining anything outside of athletics and sports. If you're not athletically inclined, there's nothing for you. So you tend to, you're kind of like in this void. The premise of this fellowship this year is we want to bring together the leaders who are at the forefront of this issue and at the forefront of the solution and ask them the question, what would happen if you worked with each other? The first thing we did was look around the community. We identified over 100 organizations whose mission was to bring music to youth in Miami. And so in order to get into this fellowship, Organizational leaders needed to turn to somebody else who they do not already partner with and say, hey, this is what I have, this is what you have, what if we combine forces, what could we co-create? Collaboration, I thought, made sense. And in order to accomplish what the vision is, which is to make effective music education accessible and affordable to all Miami Day children, it's clear that any one organization can't make a significant dent where the, the gap is. People have to work together. The nonprofits, the school system, the philanthropists, the politicians, the community leaders. It's been, I think, brilliant. Dan invested a million dollars in these six collaborative ideas. And over the course of this year, two things have been happening at once. One is the 17 organizations that are participating are actually in real time actively collaborating with each other. And then the second thing that's happening is we are gathering every single month to share progress from each of our individual spaces and to figure out where are students getting access, where are they not, and what are we gonna do as a collective about that. I would think more than anything, this fellowship represents kind of a microcosm of what we need to do in Miami in general in the music ecosystem, which is connect with each other and collaborate. For me, it has been a teaching experience. If we support each other and all of us have the same mission, to provide music, I think I can see it as a next success. This has been a really incredibly eye-opening experience. Collaboration is hard. You know, I think it takes a lot of trust. It takes a lot of vulnerability. They've assembled a really fantastic group of leaders, but we know that we're just a small handful of the people who are doing that type of work. We have leaders across Miami that are working in partnership with one another to provide the best quality education and experience for students, which includes ensuring every child has quality arts and music programs, which includes kids having access to anything they need so that they can really reach their fullest potential. There's this interesting mix of organizations in the fellowship program that all provide different entry points to the music access ecosystem. I think we're kind of this puzzle that's fitting together that will hopefully promote the importance and impact that music education can provide for mental, social, physical well-being of, of our students. Think about how can we collaborate with one another, where there are possibly um, holes in that pipeline that we can come and fill in. and figuring out how to align those things so that everything lines up to give kids what they need with what you have to get you where you think they should go. To learn from first-hand experience and have conversations with all of these incredible leaders not only teaches me like how it is that they do the work that they do, but also how it is that I can complement the work that they do. We're all getting on this music access train, and the great thing is we're all telling the conductor to go in the same direction. My ambition is 
not only to invest with people who are really good at running their organizations, but in people who are prepared to work together with others uh, to accomplish what none of them can accomplish uh, alone. That's what's happening. I think that through this cohort, through the leadership of Rebecca and Radical Partners, that we're on to something really big, and this is just the beginning of the next steps. Putting that many leaders and that many individuals that care so deeply about the arts into one room and to tell them to come up with a solution, it's a really incredible opportunity to think about what could be possible. And when you strip away the limitations of what we've all had to fight with and what's been possible in our own silos, you strip away some of the things that are keeping progress from happening as a collective. And that's really the point of all of this. From this Music Access Fellowship, we've all come together in a way that will allow us to be able to continue working together for many years to come. What gives me confidence is who's around the table and what they're talking about. And these are people who can execute. We are so close as a community to actually solving the issues that matter most to the future of our region. We have the innovators stepping up with bold ideas. We have investors stepping up to stand with them. We have community members taking interest. And I think if we stand with each other and we collaborate with each other, we will see major progress and we will see other cities from around the world coming to see how we solved for those issues. And I see that in this program for music access, I see that for sea level rise, I see that for educational equity, I see that for housing affordability. We have the ingredients necessary to solve these issues. We just need to do it.